information implies meaning. But what is meaning? Meaning is a comparison. That's what we do. But we do it so fast, we don't realize we're doing it. We, we look at something and we match it to something from our database. We say, that is a crosswalk. That is a building, not a crosswalk. That is a window, not a building. So meaning is the perception of something relative to something else. So therefore, meaning is subjective and requires choice. Can, can we get some dramatic music here? Because meaning is subjective, for it to even exist, it needs to be perceived or measured by some form of consciousness. Einstein showed how the past and the future exist simultaneously in one geometric object. So all time exists all the time. Let me say that again. All time exists all the time. I know that sounds kind of weird and unintuitive, but we have to kind of suspend our common sense. And accept that mathematically, and according to the best physics formulas we have, that actually makes sense. So, let's visualize the geometric object that Einstein spoke about as a block. Remember the tetrahedra, the building block pixels of reality I told you about? Now imagine the entire universe, everything, everywhere, in one frozen moment in time. Like a single frame in a movie. In this one frame, all of reality everywhere appears frozen in this one position. Let me give you an analogy. In a movie shot on 35 millimeter film, there are 24 frames a second. There's no actual movement in a movie. There's just a sequence of frozen frames. Now remember how I told you about the Planck length of space, which is the smallest length possible? Well, there is also a Planck length of time, and it is much shorter than 24 frames a second. In fact, it's 10 to the 44 times shorter than a second. Okay, so back to our frozen frame of reality the entire universe in one frozen moment, one frame. But instead of a frame in a movie, it's a frame in all of reality. Now, imagine the next frame. Each frame is different from the previous one, just like in a movie. See how all frames exist in Einstein's space-time all at once? Okay, now here's where things get really, really weird. We assume that the past influences the future. That's how we appear to experience reality. But when you look at this block, why would one side be the past and one side be the future? Why go left to right and not right to left? Why can't the future influence the past? Take away the names past and future if that helps you think of this concept. So what if the past influences the future and the future influences the past in an endless feedback loop? So then, the question is, which part of the past is influencing which part of the future, and vice versa? And the answer is, all time is affecting all time, all the time. Hi, I need a drink. Is this even possible? Can me, 20 years from now, influence me now? Just as I influence her? So can me five minutes from now influence me 10 minutes ago? Just as me 10 minutes ago influences me as a baby. Just as me as a baby influences me on my deathbed. This is too weird to even grasp but everything we know says this is the way it is. Am I stoned? Okay, so if every moment is co-creating every other moment, both forward and backward in time, then reality would be this massive neural network spanning space and time. This type of network would have one even way stranger quality than anything we've talked about so far. It would be its own creator. But the fact that all time exists all the time does not mean that the future is written in stone and we're some kind of programmed animation or something.
That's what they used to believe, though. Years ago, it was popular to believe in the somewhat bummer idea of reality being a deterministic program playing itself out. Why the scattered by electrons and bounce off electrons? The famous double slit experiment ruled out determinism. Look it up if you've never heard of it. It's wild and is one of the cornerstones of modern physics. But for now, take my word for it. It ruled out determinism and ushered in a new era of non-determinism, or basically, free will. So, how does free will work? One of the most surprising discoveries of quantum physics is that reality only exists when it is observed. That literally, particles do not exist until they are observed. Famous physicist John Wheeler, he's the guy who came up with the term black hole, says that reality is made of information which is created by observation. The observation must be made, he says, by something conscious. And Nobel Prize winner Frank Wilczek said that quantum theory is contentious and obscure, and that it will remain that way until someone constructs, within the formalism of quantum mechanics, an observer, a model entity whose states correspond to a recognizable caricature of conscious awareness an entity, an observer. So Frank Wilczek is basically talking about an entity, not necessarily a human being or an animal, that is capable of generating information by observing and measuring. But what would that conscious entity be? Well, we definitely know that consciousness exists in the universe. I mean, at least in us humans, right? I mean, I'm conscious, you're conscious, he's conscious, I think. Consciousness relates deeply to physics in ways not yet fully understood. In fact, consciousness is kind of like one of the least understood things in all of science. Nobody knows exactly what it is. Weird, right? So if reality is pure information, if everything, energy, matter, thought, if it's all information, then it becomes clear that reality deeply ties into consciousness in some way, as if the fundamental stuff of reality is somehow consciousness. Did consciousness and information somehow emerge in a causality feedback loop? German physicist Werner Heisenberg developed the first equations of quantum mechanics using a type of math called matrix theory. He deduced that space and time were pixelated into indivisible three-dimensional Planck length units, just like the two-dimensional pixels on your computer screen. It's good to be made of pixels. The mathematics indicated this. Mathematics? I love mathematics. Your pizza, professor. And pizza. Oh, I love pizza. Especially pixelated pizza. And interestingly, there was no solid experimental evidence for smooth. In other words, not pixelated, space-time. Mmm. Pizza. Not pixelated! Not pixelated! Pixelated! We are not pixelated! Not pixelated! Yes, you are, morons. Your mother is pixelated! Space is smooth. There is no evidence of that. And the mathematics show it is pixelated, so it must be pixelated. Oh, that's interesting. Bullshit. It must be pixelated. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. On the other hand, most